Hello everyone, my name is Revan, also Handy, and I have a problem. As some of you know, I have way too many miniatures and sometimes no motivation to paint them. So, I'm sure you're wondering, how do I motivate myself to slay the pile of grey? Well, first before I tell you how I motivate myself, uh, I have a feeling a lot of people need to hear this because this is a big killer of motivation to paint miniatures and that is... Your minis are never gonna live up to the expectation you want them to. We're not all golden demon level painters and most of us honestly never will be. Because painting a golden demon winning miniature can take weeks if not months to paint. Just be happy with your current painting skills at the time so you can improve the more you paint and learn. You can get inspiration from somewhere on the internet and just dive in and learn a new technique. It may not look great the first time, but the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. You're gonna make happy little accidents along the way, but just remember, no matter the skill level, all miniature painters make happy little accidents. And don't forget to remember what got you into this hobby, which was either the lore or the cool miniatures. But always remember that magic, which is heresy, that first got you into Warhammer. Most of us are in this hobby for the fun of building, painting, and playing with our plastic toy soldiers not chasing some trophy. So have fun and enjoy it for what it is, a hobby. Nothing more, nothing less. Just make sure you remember to thin your paints because that's always the first step. Okay, now with that little motivational speech out of the way, how do I motivate myself to paint this monstrosity of a pile of shame I got myself into? Well, I have three solutions to help you that I use and then I'm gonna shell myself since that's what also helps to motivate me to paint along with the three solutions. The first solution that I like to use for motivation is following the rule of cool. This is also what gets a lot of us into the armies we enjoy. The rule of cool for those who are new to Warhammer watching this video is what a lot of us Warhammer veterans like to say when people ask us what army they should play if they're new to Warhammer. Basically what we're saying is, pick what you think looks cool that you think you'll also enjoy painting. This is unfortunately a pitfall some people fall into when they first start Warhammer, which is they think everything is cool, and then they buy a bunch of miniatures, paint a few of them, find out which ones they don't like painting, and are now stuck with an investment they don't really want to put time or effort into. So it either sits on the shelf or on the display cabinet as a grey horde, always getting pushed back behind painting projects you find more desirable. Now, as I'm sure some of the veterans of this channel are aware before I settled on Dark Angels, Custodies, and Imperial Knights as my armies, for now, in between that time I also had some Necrons and Tyranids. But the more I looked at them and painted my other stuff, I realized that based on the parts I enjoyed painting with my Custodies and Dark Angels, which was their utilitarian look, I wasn't really gonna enjoy painting some of the monotone colors of Necrons or the flesh colors of Tyranids because while the Necrons are probably one of the easiest armies to paint, in my eyes I'm not gonna have much fun painting something I don't think looks very cool. Then with Tyranids I realized that the organic look they have isn't really my kind of style and I honestly just can't put my finger on why that is. And also I don't want to paint a horde army where everything looks the same and there isn't really much room for variation. So I sold all of them off a long time ago since I figured I'd rather put it towards something I knew I enjoyed, but I did keep the Neuro Tyrant since it looks unique compared to the other Tyranids and not just a slightly mutated and larger Termagant. Now I can also hear a few of you saying, but aren't your Custodes and Dark Angels monotone too? Well, yes it may appear that way, there is some variation that makes them different from each other. Like the different shades of various reds and metallics for different unit types, or using different highlight colors for each army to make them stand out from each other, checker patterns on my dreadnoughts, using a mixture of purple and red for my custodies, just minor things that make them stand out from each other while also looking cool at the same time. The Imperial Knights I also have because, come on, who doesn't dig giant robots? Because not only do chicks dig giant robots, but we dig giant robots. And if you got that reference, good for you. You're a man or woman of culture. This is also one of the reasons my first miniature was my Warlord Titan, because it's the biggest robot you can buy in Warhammer, and just because I only have Imperium doesn't mean I don't have my eyes on that Taunar. And yes, they aren't painted yet, but in the past I did paint some Adeptus Titanicus Titans, and I had a lot of fun painting those, and I'm also working on my side Titan right now. But the main point I'm getting at is for all this stuff, I painted what I thought was cool. But just being cool doesn't cut it sometimes because painting the same thing over and over again can get pretty boring sometimes. Which leads me to solution number two for cutting through that pile of shame, which is breaking up the monotony. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, let me give you an easy example. How likely do you think you want to continue painting your pile of shame when you just finished painting your 40th Primaris Space Marine in a row? Well, you're probably not going to continue painting since you burned yourself out. 
and I sure as hell didn't want to continue painting as soon as I got myself to that point. This is also one of the reasons I slowly started to pivot to custodies, if I ignore the other reason I'll get to in a few minutes. You see, the problem with modern day Warhammer and its armies is that there isn't really any variation in any given army like Space Marines. It's mostly just Primaris Space Marine with a bolter, or Flying Primaris Space Marine with a plasma gun, or Primaris Space Marine with a nerf launcher. And most of the cool custody stuff is locked behind Forge World, which honestly didn't stop me if you couldn't tell. But even the Dreadnoughts are starting to unfortunately suffer the same fate, which is a bummer since the Dreadnoughts that got Legends really brought a lot of flavor to Space Marines. But a good way to break up the monotony of painting the same thing over and over again is to paint something different. And I'm guilty of only having this revelation just recently. For example, I have been painting Space Marines for two years in a row and I wanted to paint something different that I think looks cool. Well, I know in the lore Dark Angels have Men of Iron locked in the vaults of the rock, so I figured why not paint a Man of Iron in Horus Heresy Dark Angels colors? Or hey, I think the Calexus Assassin looks cool. Let's paint that because it's different and isn't just another primary Space Marine. Or, I really think the Telamon Dreadnought is a cool Dreadnought. Let's get one and eventually paint it. But then decide he needed some friends after finding a Watches of the Gate box online. And then end up with about 5,000 points of custodies. Yeah, breaking up that monotony real good. Honestly, the best way to do this is just get a random blister pack miniature like an HQ, or even the miniature of the month at the GW store, and paint that instead of your main army. Honestly, the miniature of the month is probably the cheaper option where you don't end up with another army because you enjoyed painting that one blister pack. So getting a model that's different from your army or just painting a special unit from your army you think looks cool is a good way to help increase and also decrease your pile of shame while also keeping you motivated since you aren't just painting Primera Space Marine with X weapon for the 50th time. But my final recommendation that isn't me shilling myself just yet is both a combination of the first and second suggestion, but just a general suggestion that I found works great for me to reduce the pile of shame, which is alternating what I paint. But wait, Revan, I hear you saying, isn't that just the previous suggestion of breaking up the monotony? Well, yeah, it kind of is, but this expands upon it. Instead of just painting something different that you think looks cool, we now add the mission modifier of alternating squad, mini, squad, mini, or squad, mini, vehicle, mini, squad. Because with this painting habit, you get to alternate between painting a squad or a single miniature, then another squad or a vehicle, etc, etc. And I count the vehicle as a squad because vehicles are usually a painting project of their own similar to a squad. So what I now do is I paint a squad and then I paint a single miniature that I think looks cool to break up the monotony. But it also helps to keep things fresh by alternating between a squad painting project that may take a few weeks to painting a single miniature that takes up either two days of my time or a week. I can prove this by showing the things I painted since I started doing this back in November. So I first started with the squad painting project of 11 Sisters of Silence, then I painted Valerian, then 6 Solaris Terminators, 2 Tyveros the Red Wakes which are going to be a part of a future painting tutorial for Carcharodons, then a squad of 3 Aquilan Terminators, after that Asmodai, and currently my side Titan as an experiment for the Knights and Warlord Titan. Alternating painting projects I think is probably going to be the golden ticket for a lot of people to get through that pile of shame because now you get to dictate your own terms of what you want to paint so then it doesn't turn into a second job but rather it goes back to being the fun hobby we all know and love. This is the reason I've lately been able to consistently pump out more painted miniatures than all my previous years on YouTube. So now I get to the shilling part of this video which is my biggest helper and motivation to paint my stuff which is all of you. That's right, all of you that are here watching this video right now and also those that tune into my stream. Before I started YouTube and live streaming, barely any of my painting projects ever got done in a decent time frame. They usually just sat on my hobby desk for months at a time with little to no progress at all, besides more and more getting added to the pile of shame. But streaming and content creation has honestly helped me a lot, since I now set aside dedicated times to assemble and paint my pile of shame. Well, the stuff I can get to that doesn't hinge on my family setting up a garage workshop for me. But this is probably my biggest motivation for painting because I get to interact with you guys answering questions while I also work on slaying the gray. But I also know that because of me having set times to work on Warhammer, some of you have also used stream times to slay your pile of gray. So if you too want to reduce your pile of shame, 
Just paint what you think looks cool to break up the monotony. And don't forget to alternate between what you paint to keep things fresh and exciting. And hey, maybe pop into a stream and say hi to tell me what projects you're working on. But as always, thank you once again for watching this video. Don't forget if you want to support the channel, simply leaving a comment down below and hitting the like and subscribe button helps more than you think. And also a special thank you to the channel members that help motivate me even more since now this is sort of a fun side quest because you guys help me make up bullshit excuses to my parents about why I totally need another display case to house all my miniatures that I have little to no more space for. Anyways, I have to go make more terrible financial decisions, so I will see you on the next video and remember, being poor is a choice.